This episode is brought to you by Farmers Insurance. When was the last time you reviewed your insurance policy? So it's been a while, huh? Well, no worries. My friends at the Austin Brummett Agency would love to hear from you and provide you with some amazing rates. Give them a call at 678-402-8262 or email them at abrummett at farmersagent.com. That's A-B-R-U-M-I-T at farmersagent.com and tell them Harley sent you. Insiders, Inside the Bubble with Harley G is now sponsored by BetterHelp. As a partner of this episode, listeners can access the BetterHelp link located in the show notes to receive 10% off your first month of therapy with BetterHelp and get matched with a therapist who will listen and help. Go to BetterHelp, that is betterhelp.com slash inside the bubble, the link to get started. You're listening to Inside the Bubble with Harley G, the podcast for the superwoman. Every week, we connect with amazing individuals who share their inspirational experiences and stories while motivating an inspiring purpose. It's time to hang your cape. Grab your coffee, your water, your cocktail, and come on in Inside the Bubble with me, your host, Harley G. Inside the Bubble with Harley G, and I have Humphrey with me today. Let me tell you something. You guys are in for a treat today. Um, I always talk about purpose. This is what this podcast is about. It's about really showcasing people's stories and experiences that are pursuing purpose, discovering purpose, walking in their purpose. And today's um, speaker or guest, Humphrey is actually if there was a if there was in a dictionary a picture of purpose like mm-hmm. if it said purpose and then there was a picture of a human being it would probably be yours okay? Thank you. <laughs> because Thank you for the of uh, what you're about to tell us um, I am super excited about this and I can't wait for us to to get into it so Humphrey Humphrey you are from Kenya yes and yes, um, so you grew up in probably one of some very uh poor circumstances and environment right so tell us a little bit about what your environment was like growing up in kenya okay yeah uh thank you holly you're welcome absolutely for for the opportunity to be in your studio yes to do this together (laughs) yes and thank you so much for your kind words let me see my name is humphrey Mm-hmm. My middle name is Mudengi, and the last name is called is Kanga. Kanga, yes. Yes, I grew in the countryside of Kenya, uh, in one of the very remote places, in a place called Chuka. Mm-hmm. I grew up in a family of fifteen uh, children. My fifteen fa- children. Yes. I need you all to to hear this, like. 15 children under one roof. Yes. 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 Uh, my father was um, a big amiss. Those, those days, it was a common cultural practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, that's where I, I grew. And let me say, uh, growing up, it was a little, a little challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, challenge in the sense that uh, the, the facilities, call it the bed, call it the, the, the comfort blankets, mm-hmm. call it uh, food, uh, shelter, clothing. Uh, they were, they were, they were not, I can't say they were sufficient. You can mm-hmm. imagine a mama with 15 children. Mm-hmm. These parents have no regular job. Mm-hmm. Uh, all they do is they till the ground. They have a garden to yeah. feed the children. Yeah. You can be sure uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very hard situation yeah. because on the other hand, they depended on the weather. Yes. With the dust and terrain, there's no food. There's no food. So yeah. let me say I grew in that kind of an environment. I know what uh, hunger is. Mm-hmm. I've 
slept a couple of nights without anything. A couple? <laughs> I think it's more than a couple. Of three. Come on now. Don't yes, it down yes, for us. Yes. I've slept for many times. Many times I've experienced so many times that I went without food uh, for, the, for lunch, uh, food for, for dinner, mm -hmm. uh, or evening meal. And uh, I know what hunger uh, is. So yeah. I grew in that kind of an environment. I, the little things, the, the job that I did when I was growing up uh, in the home, in a large family, um, uh, one of my duties was to, to look after goods and cattle. Okay. My father and some goods and some cattle. So one of my duties was to look after cows, cows to take them to cattle. the river, yeah. uh, take the goods to the field to, 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 to graze mm -hmm. and to milk yeah. uh, uh, so that we can have milk for the, for the family. Mm -hmm. uh, the houses were made up of sticks. We are in the two main houses. One of the houses, the main house, we called it the big house mm -hmm. or the sleeping house. Okay. <laughs> and the other little house where my mama uh, used to cook, we called it uh, a kitchen. Okay. So there were those two houses uh, which were not big. They were not big like the houses I've seen in the, in, in the U.S. <laughs> and in other, in other places. <laughs> or in other, so would houses. you say like the, the houses were like bigger than the size of this room? Or yes, it was bigger than the, the, the size of studio this room. Okay. Because it was divided such that at the Middle of the house uh -huh. is what they called a table room. Yes, a table uh -huh. and a few chairs, okay. not fifteen chairs, just okay. a few chairs. If you get a chair to sit, fine. If right. you don't, you, you don't. don't, you don't. Yeah. So, and um, one side is where my mama was uh, sleeping with her kids, mm -hmm. and the other side is where the other mama was uh, sleeping uh, mm -hmm. with her kids. Okay. So that, that's the environment I grew in. I was able to. I was sent to school, but uh -huh. again, I went to school when I was eight because yes, uh, going to school uh you want to the the the, mesh, the the criteria they used to, to to determine that you're ready for school uh -huh. is where you put your hand across your head and if you touch your ear you are ready that is crazy yes. so you're telling me that the determining factor for kids uh, for, uh, for when you were growing up, for kids to be able to go to school, is if you could take your hand and reach the opposite side of your earlobe. Yes, yes, that, that is crazy. crazy. <laughs> that is yes. crazy. Okay, yeah. like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So th that that was the that was the criteria. And um, imagine we are there, fifteen of us. We have some other children. We are, there were other I and brothers and sisters who are slightly mm -hmm. older than I am, and with the very insufficient uh, insufficient resources. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, when it was time for me to go to school, I did my hand like this. Mm -hmm. I touched my shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want, know what that means, so I said, okay, you are ready. Yeah. But uh, this time I can tell, it's later on I realized I dreamed. Yeah. The, there was a dream taking me to school uh -huh. because I went to school when I was allowed nine years. That's wow, the time that's I when you started in school. So you started that, school at yes. nine. Yes, and the reason was, uh, was that uh, they kept on telling me to wait a little bit. I'm mm -hmm. not touching the ear real good, but I think it was a trick so that uh, other Children who are older who are than older me can, to get can, to go. Go, can go yes. to school. Okay. And when I joined grade one, um, I was a big boy. Yeah. And I was wondering, why am I in class with very small right. boys? It only to realize years right. later, it's me who, who got late. Oh, you got there late. <laughs> but you got there. But, 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 it got worked there. Out, but it worked out for me. Yeah. It worked out for me because I was able to understand the school concept. Better, better like better, faster, right? Faster because yes. I was already uh, a grown-up boy. So, okay. So, you, you had like two houses... 15 children yes. uh the main house had like the kitchen yes. and a few chairs yes. so not enough for all 15 of you guys yes. to sit down mm. so it was just kind of like to each his own right yes. what was your relationship like with those 14 other siblings let me say i we, i had a very good relationship i had a good relationship with my sibling with mm -hmm. my brothers and with my sisters mm -hmm. though we came from we we are from different parents yeah we we kids have kids don't care they kids, don't they, they, they don't, don't. They, don't they, they don't care yeah so we had a very good relationship with my brothers with my sisters mm -hmm. and even now we we have that relationship you see, we, yeah you, you see them and you see yeah you, you, see, you, you feel there's a closeness there, right there, 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 that you all have been through being yes. in that environment growing up with each other you know um so how many of your siblings 
did you go to school? Because you started out late. So yes. how many of you all of the 14 went to school? Uh, oh, incidentally, my father, my parents were very hardworking. My mama okay. and my father were very hardworking. Mm -hmm. We they sent all of us were able to go to school. Oh wow! Although it was a big struggle. Yeah. It was a big struggle because uh, we time and again we were we were chased or we were sent home to mm -hmm. go to go get the levies. Yeah. Or to go to go uh, work. To to to, to go uh, home because our clothes are torn oh. so that the parents can get us new clothes. Yeah. So there, there were lots of moments of going uh, home because mm -hmm. you have not paid school fees. We yeah. call it fees or right. tuition. So yes. there are those. But somehow we soldiered on. Yes. We soldiered on and it <laughs> continues. And uh, finally we are able to reach to whichever, wherever, wherever somebody wanted to reach yeah. in school because they worked real, real hard. Wow. Okay. So <clears throat> you are growing up in these in this environment um and then you were also working as well so you were handling the cattle yes <laughs> someone stuck in my throat yeah. so you're handling the cattle and all of that and you're going to school now talk to me a little bit about you discovering the church what was that like um, when I was young, I found myself in church. Mm -hmm. My mother was uh, a, was a Christian, and uh, she she was a committed Christian. Mm -hmm. So she introduced us to the church. Mm -hmm. She took us to the Sunday school. She assured that we went to the Sunday school, mm -hmm. and uh, she was very keen on that. Okay. So it's when I was in the church, uh, um, uh, as we grew, as I continued in the Sunday school, mm -hmm. it's when an, um, some boys, I saw some boys from high school who mm -hmm. came and talked about God with a lot of experience. And oh. I felt I needed to upgrade. I need yes. to upgrade like them. I need to upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> I, <need an> <laughs> uh, I needed to love their God. So yes. um, they prayed for me and um, I felt I needed Something. that. Uh, I, I, right. I needed. I needed to be courageous, and I needed to love God as I saw them. Yeah. Uh, you know. You know. Talk about God with a lot of excitement. So mm -hmm. that and that experience, one in 1976, which 1976. was very seventy six. Yes, which was very, which was very good. It was. It was. So how old were you then? I was in grade six. Grade six grade. Okay. Yes, so wow. Nine plus six. Yes. Okay. So you were in sixth grade, 1976. You are experiencing church and yes. you're seeing the passion and the fire yes. with these teenage boys, right? Yes, Who are talking yes. to you about yes. Christ and God. And, yes. And you're just moved. I by was that. moved and they led me to in a prayer to commit my life to Christ. Yes. That changed my that changed wow. my that changed my whole being. It wow. changed my life. Yes. Yes. My goodness. And, and okay, so so you talked a little bit about your environment and how the 15 of you all grew up. But what about like around you, like other kids? What were their situations very similar to yours or uh, how was that? I think the situation in that home, in that uh, uh, large home, mm -hmm. or in that large family, it was the same. Mm -hmm. Whatever experience I had, whatever uh, difficulties I had, mm -hmm. it was everybody. We right. went through that, all of us. All of us together. And I remember sometimes my mama uh, or the other mother would, they would, cook for us mm -hmm. and when I see the pot that they have set on fire oh. when I see the food that they are cooking uh, well I feel so discouraged because uh, when you put uh, when you, you you start cooking with a small pot yeah. and you have like 15 plus some more Children. Close to 20 children to yes. feed close 20 mouths to feed yeah. you can easily tell the amount of food that you reach, yeah, you. so uh, it was it was so discouraging. Oh, it was so discouraging. I yeah. wish they had I wish they had the opportunity to cook in a right, big pot, in a big pot, such right? that I would get enough and right. Uh, and be so satisfied. you just had you guys just had you know a very small portions. Yes, very yeah. small. Those mm. portions were very small. And uh, oh my goodness. But you know, we are alive today. <laughs> yes, exactly, right? Look at life now. Okay, so you have this encounter. Yes. Um, and you you accept God as your 
as your savior. Yes. Um, and and then what? So I mean, the story does not stop here. Yes. So, we are just uh, after beginning that, here. Af- yeah. After that, these boys, uh, when uh, when that when I had that experience, I worked very I worked very hard. Ladies, I know there's so much to do and not enough time in the day. Trust me, I'm right there with you. But what are you doing for yourself? Well, I've recently discovered Body Bar Pilates. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Body Bar Pilates will challenge all of your major muscle groups and provide you with a full body workout. Wow. Listen, I had to check it out. I took a class with Sherelle and it was amazing. They have workouts for all skill levels, whether you're just starting out or you're just looking for a new way to move your body. This is the community for you. Check out my friends at Body Bar Pilates East Cobb or give them a call at 678-941-4371. And don't forget to mention me, Harley G. So were they, were, so were they, sorry for interrupting, were they missionaries or were they no, people, local no, boys? they are local boys. Okay. One of them was my brother. Wow. One of them was my brother. Okay. He had gone to high school uh-huh. in uh, uh, in grade 10. Okay. He came along to our Sunday school with a couple of boys. Yes. A bunch of boys. Right. But then he's called it a band of boys. Yes. Uh, so they came and met with us as the, uh, uh, the Sunday school mm-hmm. young teachers. Mm-hmm. And they spoke to us about God in a way yeah. that stuck in my, yes. in my mind. When okay. I saw the, right. when I saw the excitement, when I saw the fire, when yes. I saw the you know the enthusiasm that yes. we had. So I I don't I need to I need I need, I to, need to find out. I, I need to find out. Now. Yes, <laughs> exactly. You're right. Okay. So you have this fire now. Yes. The flame, the flame is lit, yes, right? So yes. throw you lit the fire. <laughs> yes. And so do you decide then or does it take time for you to realize that you know what? I think I'm gonna go I want to know more. I think I want to go down yes. that path. I want yes. to learn more about Jesus. I want to learn more. Like, how long does it take? Is it instantaneous for you, or does it take time? To me, it is a journey. Because after that, uh, after that, that hunger was created in mm-hmm. me. I went ahead and worked real hard in a garden. Mm-hmm. Somebody gave me a, a day's job mm-hmm. in a garden. Mm-hmm. I bought a small New Testament Bible, which okay. I read. Uh-huh. I read that Bible mm-hmm. as I looked after cattle. Yeah. And um, it became my companion. Okay. In school, I carried it. Yeah. Uh, in the field, as I had, I, I took care of cattle and uh-huh. goats, uh-huh. I carried it. Uh-huh. So as I take cattle to the river to get water, I carried it. Wow. So, and I read it. I read from Genesis, uh, not Genesis, from um, from Matthew, Matthew to Revelation. To Re- yes. And it became tattered. Wow. It became brown because I wanted to learn more. Yes. I wanted to get more, especially the stories, the the, the parts I found very interesting mm-hmm. were the, the, the Gospels. Absolutely! They were very interesting. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Come on now. <laughs> These, these are my brothers. Yes. 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 So uh, I say it's a journey. Then after that, I worked very hard in the school. I wasn't very good in grade six and grade uh, before then. Uh-huh. So I, I worked very hard. I read okay. so many. I I, I read so many uh, story books. Uh-huh. And I worked very hard. I did my assignment mm-hmm. in school because I wanted to get good grades and join them in that high school. Okay. And finally, I joined uh, that high school. Uh-huh. Then I joined that gang of boys again. Yes. They taught me how to pray. Okay. They taught me how to 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 uh, how, how to how, how to pray, to fast. Uh-huh. They taught me a lot of Christian disciplines. Disciplines, yes. They, they, a lot of Christian disciplines, right. and uh, th- that's the pivot on which. My life, my life, uh, my life rotates. Yeah. They taught me even how to preach. Wow. Like them. So okay. they, I, I gained a lot of exhibi- experience yes. from them. So as I was going through high school, mm-hmm. I, I designed that uh, I would want to commit my life to serve God and the people. Okay. So uh, that's, that's, that's the way I find it. I got involved more in church. Mm-hmm. I was also involved in the youth, uh, let me call it youth ministry. Yes, youth ministry. Uh, we would yes. visit uh, high schools, some yes. high schools. Uh-huh. We would, uh, later on, as I progressed, we would visit colleges mm-hmm. to 
to share with them about the love of Christ wow. and to infect them with this with this passion, with this fire passion. that you yes. had, yes. right? Yes. That was given to you, and now you're like, I'm gonna, sh I can't keep this to myself. I gotta, yes. go I have to go share this, right, yes. with yes. other um, youth. Um, okay, so you go to high school, you're on fire now. You become a youth minister. Yes, you are bringing other um, children to the Lord yes. by witnessing to them and, mm. and talking to them. And so now you've kind of taken care of your little part of the world, right? Yes, like sure. in Kenya. Mm. So now you're like, you know what? This is not good enough. Yes. Like yes. this is, I can't stop here. Mm. I've got, this is bigger. So and what, what happens? So what happened is, um, um, as I continue to grow, I said that, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a journey. Yes. Discovering your purpose is, is a widening, it's a widening journey. Exactly. You keep on, you keep on doing things. Yes. This and the and other. Just, and yes. until finally you discover this is it. Yes. I so, absolutely uh, agree with you. I was talking to a friend of mine, um, if weeks ago, and we were saying how the journey of purpose is a moving target yes. because you like you start here and you're like okay yeah i found it mm -hmm. and he's like no 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 that's not mm -hmm. it i need you to go there and then you get there and you're like no 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 that's not here mm -hmm. i need you to go there yes. and it keeps yes. it, uh, it keeps um evolving right yes. Mm -hmm. yes so what happened is after that uh, i've been involved in uh, the youth ministry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as i grew as i grew i became committed to church i felt now i need to get more into the church mm -hmm. which i got i became a leader a deacon an elder in the church mm -hmm. and finally uh, uh in uh, 19 uh, um in the 90s i became a, a lay minister a lead minister okay. a, lay, a lay minister mm -hmm. one okay. was not, uh, a lay minister in the, okay. in the in the in the church uh -huh. and i became a pastor okay i became a pastor of a church where i did church for five for five years mm -hmm. as a church and the church continued to grow mm -hmm. but a time came and i felt still I mean, I, I'm inadequate. I'm yeah. inadequate. So I've, I, I, I prayed for three years, trusting God to get mm -hmm. an opportunity to come over to the U.S. Mm -hmm. for theological education. Okay. Um, of course, I didn't know anybody. Right. I had no connections, mm -hmm. but I knew uh, I had God. And you had I had the faith that... Yes. Uh, it doesn't go by who you know, but right. it goes by, it's God. It's God, God. who opens those doors. Exactly. So okay. finally God, okay. So I want to, uh, because we are about to get into like, insiders, you're about to see what happens when you truly trust God. And yes. I, I believe that I am on a journey and he's trying to teach me how to mm. trust him. But we have a hard time relinquish, relinquishing control, right? Yes. Cause, mm -hmm. Because we think, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it to you, God, but let me just take care of this piece. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want you to do that. He mm -hmm. wants you to surrender yes. and be obedient, right? And so that way you, you have to trust him inexplicably. And I feel like we're about to get in a part of your story, what well, you always have, but where, you really get, where we really get to hear and listen to how you just trust God and what happens when you do that. Yes. One of those things. So in the course of that, you do get married. Yes. Okay. Mm. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. You get yes. married. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yes. Oh, that was, that's very <laughs> interesting. That was interesting. Yes. That. <laughs> yeah. So one day, one day, uh, there's a young man who inv and invited me so that we can go, we can visit a, a young lady mm -hmm. to help their, their family in their coffee bushes okay like uh, to, to 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 it was uh, it was time to prune it was to it harvest was, it, no it was not to have it was to prune coffee oh prune are, coffee okay yeah, to yeah. prune the yes. suckers yes like to remove some branches which are yes. not necessarily yes. on a coffee plant yeah, so i yeah, yeah. pruning mm -hmm. so i went but there's this young lady who came who, who served us as the catalyst. Uh -huh. She brought us food. She brought us uh, tea. Uh -huh. you know, she brought us all that we needed uh, yes. so that we can have some energy to do the job. Yes. Um, so as we were doing this uh, to, to, uh, to helping work in that in our family, uh, I, I, as I she continued to serve us, I, saw, I, felt, I felt attracted. I felt a connection. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let alone 
the day ended, but I felt I'll pursue this lady. Yeah, this time I didn't you know, invite. Uh, after that, I didn't. Invite much, the other yeah, people. I didn't tell much to. I didn't I'm going by myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, I didn't invite my other friends. This going to I'm going to do with this myself. So I I kept on visiting that mm -hmm. young lady. She was in college by then. Okay. And um, after general friendship with her for like uh, a year, mm -hmm. one day I felt now it's too much. I um, I proposed. So we oh. organized a date. And that the day I proposed to her that I I would want to marry her. Oh, so, that is so uh, awesome. But God... God is gracious, he accepted. Uh -huh. Because if she said no, I don't know what I would do. Oh, gosh! <laughs> if she says no, obviously it turned out well. Yeah, it turned out well. That it really turned out well on my river. <laughs> and then from that, you know, it was it was a whole different kind of life. Okay. But it's, it was not over because a, a time came and then to go uh, um, and uh, to send my parents mm -hmm. to her parents so that she can, they can go they can go report yeah. that I am the suitor. Yes. I have found a wife in, in her. Yeah. So uh, that did not go well. Really? The father, the father <gasps> I'm sure he underdone and shoot me. <laughs> no! So he didn't like it. He, the, the father, my father in law did not like it. He opposed it. Uh, we it was it was very rough. It wow! Was, uh, it was very rough, but we persisted. Okay. We, kept, we were persistent. Yes. We, did, we never gave up. Yeah. We never gave up. We, we prayed to God. We said, God, we feel you meant our lives to be together. Together. Yeah. You are meant us for each other. Yeah. The situation is murky. It is chaos, yeah. but uh, take control of all this. Absolutely. Yes, but finally. It worked out. It worked out, it worked exactly. Out. And uh, we were, after some years, uh -huh. we became very good friends. Oh, that's really my nice. My father, you know, he was a great man. He was a great man. Awesome. Yes. And so yes. how long have you been married now? Um, I've been married now for, for that, uh, let me call it, that uh, two years. Two years. That uh, two. 32. That uh, two years. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, it definitely worked out in your yeah, favor, right? right? <laughs> yeah, it worked out for my right. favor. So you're married to your wife, and now all of a sudden you feel like there is a pool, and I need to become more knowledgeable yes. about this gospel. Yes. Mm -hmm. I need, I want to be able to preach it and speak to people and move people and impact people. Mm -hmm. And the way that you saw yourself doing that was studying it right yes. just like everybody else like we go to school and we study to be in business we study yes. to be in marketing yes. right yeah but if i'm going to do this i want to do it right and i need to go to theological school to study yes. and so now you have to talk to you you have to tell your wife sure how, yeah. what, how did that conversation yeah. go yeah. <laughs> so here i am we I, I got married we we had two children mm -hmm. and as i was doing pastoral work it's when i felt a hunger mm -hmm. and the thirst to know god more yeah so i told my wife i i am trusting god that um uh, one day you i'll get an opportunity to go out of this country for theological education, for mm -hmm. the, for, to a seminary, because by then in Kenya we, there were no, there were very There's few, no, okay. there, were no, there were very few theological schools. schools, schools. Yeah. So, but then she, I could tell she didn't believe. She didn't really. She, she didn't wasn't believe. She wasn't leaning. Yes, yeah, she <laughs> didn't believe, it and I did not take offense because she knew uh, moving from. Kenya to another country it would be too expensive for, for us, yes. for, for me particularly, and even for the family. Right. Because the church that I ministered, they couldn't pay salary. They paid like that dollars per month. That's $30 nothing. a month? Yes, that's <gasps> nothing. So um, that that cannot that cannot take you anywhere. Right. So, um, well, when I realized she, you know, she just laughed when I told her oh. what, she, what, 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 what I'm thinking of. She laughed. <laughs> She laughed, and uh, the laughter is like the laughter of Sarah when oh, the wow. angel appeared to her. Yes, that she died of a baby. Yes, at, at it was like unbelievable. It was yeah. unbelievable. Nah, so I understood that. So what I did, I kept quiet, mm -hmm. but I continued to pray 
in a, in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in secret yes. for three years. Uh -huh. But uh, in the land here, I felt now is the time. I told her now, mm -hmm. some years ago, mm -hmm. I told you I'll leave this country. Mm -hmm. Time has come. The time has come. So how long was that? Like what? Two years? How long? It was three years. Three years. Okay. Yes. So three yes. years later, you're I like, told her okay. time has come. It's um, it's it's now. Yes, now. yes. I told her in five months time, uh -huh. I'm not in this country. Wow. Okay. So uh, it's later on she believed. Uh -huh. Yeah. When she, sh I, I think, you know, consistency, uh, consistence and persistence. When mm -hmm. you persist and uh, you know you are consistent on something mm -hmm. through prayer. Yeah. You know, God has got His own way. Oh, which absolutely. He and so His she, own time, right? Yes, she got uh, she got convicted about it. We prayed together, and um, she agreed. I propose I sell a piece of land that we we hand a small piece of land we hand okay. for the family, uh -huh. uh, so that I can get air ticket. Okay. So she said, "Go ahead." Yeah. I knew now we are together. <laughs> I know, uh, no, right? So it's like, listen, yes. we're in this for life. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. So I sold the piece of land that we had. Mm -hmm. I got uh, money, some money, yeah. which mm -hmm. was insufficient um, to get, so that I can get, so, so that I can prepare now Prepa to come over. Okay. To come over. Now, did you know exactly where you were coming when you were no. coming over? Or no. like, so um, you had no idea. So you sell no, this piece of land. Not, uh, I sold a piece of land. Mm -hmm. All I knew is somebody from, a friend I knew from this, uh, who was here, mm -hmm. from, uh, who was from Kenya, mm -hmm. sent me an invitation to attend a, a conference in Cleveland, Tennessee. Okay. So, so I am on the invitation of Cleveland, Tennessee. Giant. It was not for a school, but I mean, so once I So for this invitation to attend this conference, that was what, a few days maybe? Yes, it right. was 10 days. But you days. felt like this was going to be your opportunity yeah, to that come Yeah, that I knew for me it's That's a conference it. and school. Got it. Uh, yes. Got it. Okay. Yes. So you have this conference now. Yes. Um, you sold your land. You have your money. And do you have enough money to even no, fly money. to make it here? The, the money was not enough. The wow. money The money was not uh, enough mm -hmm. because um, I sold the piece of lard for like $900. Okay. And uh, coming here, uh, I used 96 uh, That is $960. The flight. <gasps> It was nine sixty dollars uh, up to New York. What happened is I I and you didn't even land in Tennessee. You landed in New York. No, no, no. <gasps> I landed in New York because okay. I thought I didn't have a good perspective. And I didn't have a good perspective <laughs> of US because I <laughs> went from New York to Tennessee with a uh, bus drive. You oh, drive yes. there by bus. I mean, yes, I you can get by bus, but it's gonna take you a long I time. I know it's a journey of four, 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 four days by Greyhound <gasps> bus. So, um, so you live in New York and yes. then you take a Greyhound bus to Tennessee? Yes, but it, in the gray, at the Greyhound bus, let me say, well, the money is not enough. Right. I had some Christian friends, mm -hmm. some Christian friends um, who, 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 when I shared with them, they give me some additional money. money. Again, yeah. it was not much because they didn't have much. Yeah. So at least I was able to land it too. Okay. To 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 New York. In New York. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then in New York, I had only in my pocket and only one hundred and twenty dollars in my pocket. One hundred twenty dollars. I paid for bus fare to Cleveland, Tennessee, okay. for one fifteen dollars. So I'm left with five dollars. Five dollars. Yes, to take me now to start my life. <gasps> Wow. Okay. In, in America. So you have five dollars yes. left in your pocket yes. because you spent it on the bus tickets to get to this conference. Yes. Right. Yeah. And it's and you're really here for seminary school. Yes. So okay. So you get to the conference. Yes. What happens at the conference? Um. So um. If, at the ba Greyhound bus, I lost that ticket. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, wait. Stop. Stop. So stop. 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 Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes before before the we board the bus. <gasps> it's when I realized that my my ticket is missing. Oh my I, gosh! I reported to the clerk. Yes. In the uh, of the Greyhound uh -huh, the clerk, office, uh -huh. the clerk, and he told me I need to buy another ticket. He has no, they don't do duplicates because I thought he would give me a duplicate to yes. show I paid. You know He's like, that? no, yes. but you only have five dollars. This Greyhound I'm ticket. Going, I'm going, I'm going, I told them I told them I don't have any yes. other money. Yes. But um, behind me was a gentleman I traveled with mm -hmm. in the plane. Mm -hmm. And he agreed. He agreed that um, 
when he handed and he saw the predicament I was in, mm -hmm. he agreed or he somehow was moved to buy for me another ticket. Wow. He, me, he told me, I'll buy you another ticket. <gasps> He paid for me another ticket. He paid ticket. for your last ticket. He paid for my last ticket. And you got on a Greyhound bus. I got in the Greyhound bus. I got to Cleveland, Tennessee for 10 days uh, for uh, that conference. Uh -huh. So for in Cleveland, Tennessee, it was a, it was a, a conference about, about, um, about uh, training and equipping of uh, pastors from all over the, the world, world. Uh -huh. all over the world mm -hmm. to minister or to preach. Yes. So... The conference ended, uh -huh. and on the evening, the evening of the last day of the conference. But wait, where did you sleep at the oh, conference? In the conference, they provided us with the uh, with housing, with hotel. housing dormitories. I think got there it, was a it. dormitory. Okay, we, we, perfect. Okay, where we slept. So you stayed in and food. There was food. So yes. There was no so at least that was taken mm. care of. You yes. still have your five dollars. <laughs> no, five dollars is not there. Five dollars is not there. From from Tennessee, from uh, from uh, New York. <laughs> You had to use it. Honestly, uh, that journey, uh -huh. I didn't take any solid food. Wow. I survived on coke and the peanuts. <gasps> you know those those yes. little nuts you buy. Yes, the, the little peanut packet. Yes, those, those are the ones. <gasps> and coke. And coke. Yes, that's what I survived. And that was four on. days. That was four. That was four, four days. days. You because ate the coke bus, the bus is not in a. The bus goes by hours. Exactly. It will go. It was, yeah. It was have many stopovers. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Like every. So, but when I got to Cleveland, at least I had food for the first oh time. Oh my gosh. I had food for the, you the first time. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you go to this conference. Yes. It is ten days, and now the conference is about to end. Yes. So what happens? In the evening, uh, and the last day of the conference, a pastor who and brought his church members from Atlanta to Tennessee mm -hmm. uh, to attend the conference, mm -hmm. stood up in the conference mm -hmm. in the evening and said, if there's anyone who would need, who is in need of a ride to Atlanta, mm -hmm. he has space in the bus. I lost my hand up and told him, I need that ride. And I was but, the only one. But, but just because he had offered to go to Atlanta, like is that is that why you were going? Was there something in Atlanta that was that was bringing you here, or it was just because he announced it? Because he announced it. Got it. Because he announced wow. it. Because once the camp is lo is closed. Yeah. Then where you go? Well, where, where do I go? So exactly. I said, okay. Like, oh, I'll, 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 keep, I'll keep. I'll keep moving. Wow. I'll keep moving. Okay. So you get on this bus with this pastor. <laughs> And you come to Atlanta. I come to Atlanta, but uh, before I left, uh, one of the one of the there's a gentleman I met from um, from Birmingham, uh -huh. Alabama, mm -hmm. uh, who gave me a phone number mm -hmm. of a Kenyan man he knew who was living in Georgia. Got it. But Got I did it. not. Jo it's Georgia where. But I know, right? I mean, yes. Georgia is so because big. Georgia is so big. Right. I didn't know which part of Georgia he was living. So when you heard Atlanta, you're like, well, Atlanta's in Georgia. Yes. Okay. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. So you get on this bus yes. to Atlanta because you, you might have a connection there. Yes. And you come to Atlanta. Okay. Well, first of all, I need I need you to tell the insiders where exactly you you were dropped off in Atlanta. Yes. Yes. Um... From Tennessee, uh, I was uh, when we reached um, a place called Big Chicken. The Big Chicken. The Big Chicken. Wow. So the pastor said, "Okay, we are about to get to downtown Atlanta." Uh -huh. He asked me where am I alighting. I, I I told him, "Let me alight at the Big Chicken because I hung it." Because you heard, <laughs> you heard about the Big Chicken. I told him, "I'll do it at the Big Chicken." That's a, wow. let me alight there. So. Uh, we arrived at the big chicken. Then I asked him to help me with the phone mm -hmm. or to call a number mm -hmm. of the Kenyan man I was told lives yes. in Georgia. I called, and this is at four. Yeah. It was at four at night in the evening. In, in the morning. morning. Oh my God, 4, 4 a.m. Okay. So you called that number, and somebody answered the call mm -hmm. and he gave me the phone to mm -hmm. to uh, to talk to. Uh, to, 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 to to talk to, to the guy, to the to guy. The, uh -huh. and I told him who I am and uh, I told him I am at the big chicken I am in this country and um, 
I told the man, you have a guest. You have a, <gasps> you have a guest you are not invited. So uh, I'm so and so. I come from Kenya mm -hmm. and I don't know anybody here. So I am at the big chicken. He told me he'll be there in less than five minutes. And in less Stop than it. five minutes, he okay. was there. Do you know how big George Elena is? It's, okay. It's huge. And this man was five minutes, less than five minutes away from the big yes, chicken. What yes, are the odds that, that you was, land, you you get dropped off at the big chicken? That was a divine by. connection. That was a divine connection because how comes he was five minutes away? I don't know. You could have went know. downtown and then he would have been 20 minutes away, 30 minutes away. You could have been dropped off in Douglas County. And, I mean, and it's, at night, it's very early in the morning. It's 4 a.m. in the morning. First of all, he picked up the phone. That's a miracle right there. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> the fact that he even picked up the phone. Yes, um, but, and then this man is less than five minutes away. So he, and, and he doesn't know you. Yes. Okay. So he comes and picks you up. Yes. And then what happens? So when he picked me up, at least we went home. Uh, he had a wife. We did breakfast. Mm -hmm. And then I narrated to him how I am in the street. Then he told me his house is small. Mm -hmm. uh, he can't accommodate me for long. Okay. Then he linked me up with a Kenyan gentleman who mm -hmm. was living in a place called Akworth. Yep. In Akworth. So yep. He linked me up with a Kenyan gentleman. Uh -huh. We are now he, uh, the Kenyan gentleman, now became my host. Oh, got my it. Host. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, um, we, I got an odd job yes. so that at least I can pay for a room. Yes, yes. So exactly. My, now at least things things are, beginning, are things are beginning to get yes to form or to right. have a form and shape. Okay, yes. so you land in Ackworth. Woo -woo, shout out to Ackworth. Um, so you you end up in Ackworth. You meet this other uh, fellow Kingsman. Yes. And um, he takes you in. And yes. now you're doing these little jobs to kind of get by, right? Yes, And, and yes. contribute somewhat. Mm. So you end up at a church. Yes. How? So what happened is uh, um, from where, from this Kenyan gentleman, mm -hmm. where I was, who offered to give me accommodation, um, there was a church close by mm -hmm. called Mercy Presbyterian Church. Which is, by it, the way, five it, minutes away from my Yes, it was, it was a walking distance uh -huh. from, the, from that home. Yeah. So um, after attending that church f for a few weeks, uh -huh. I felt a connection. I felt okay. there was a connection. Yes. I connected with that church. Uh -huh. I became uh, I became a regular member. Okay. I became a member of um, men of the church Bible study. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I started to participate in the church because I am a pastor, so the church is the thing. It's yes. the thing for me. So it is your thing. Yeah, <laughs> it is your place. Is, <laughs> the yeah. church is my place. Yes. So I became comfortable in the church. It, then it's later they learned about my calling mm -hmm. and my interest of going to, to attending seminary. Mm -hmm. And somehow the, the God moved them. Let me see. The, the mighty God moved them yes. to rally behind me and support me in that in that call and they they, uh, um, they sponsored me to Austin Theological Seminary. So wait a minute. Yes. So you start attending this church that was very close by, within mm. walking distance yes, of yes. where you lived. I walked to church. Yeah, you walked to church, and you become involved in the church, right? Yes, because yes. it's it's your place. It's yes. where you've been. That's where, that's what I know. It's, it's your home. Yeah, in that's essence, home. right? It's yes. your home. Mm. And so you start attending the church. You become part of that community, mm. and then the church hears about why you're here, right? The yes. purpose of you coming to America. Um, and they're like, you know what? We're going to support you. Yes. Yes. And they fund your way to seminary school. Yes. So we are very pre it was a very prestigious uh, theological seminary in South Carolina called Oskin. Okay. Oskin. And again, it was by God's doing. It's, it's, it was God's, uh, yes. it was God's doing. So, um, there's a question you had asked. What was the question? So uh, you, they end up funding you to seminary yes, school. Yes, yes, yes. So they fund the whole thing. You actually, you, 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 you did what you set out to do. You yes. did what you told your wife you were going to do. What you were move your calling. You were in seminary school. Yes, yes. And you didn't have to pay for it. Yes. God just 
landed you, put you in a big chicken, mm. so that you could go to sleep. Let's go. Yeah, I'm oh my gosh, I'm I'm the money. It's part of the journey, right? Yes, yes. And so, before we get into the purpose, mm. um, we're getting ready to to get into the purpose. As you are going through this journey, Humphrey, mm. what is happening? What peace of mind that you're in? Because I will tell you that when we go through life challenges and difficulties, it is so easy. At any point in that journey, you could have said, that's it, I'm done. Listen. At any point, you could have said, let me figure out how I can get some money so I can go back to Kenya. Yeah. At any point, you could have said, you know what? This is too hard. Mm. At any point, you could have said, I don't think I want to do this anymore. Mm. But you didn't. But what is going on through your mind, through your spirit, as you're going through this journey? Um, what was going on through my mind is uh, I knew I had come here in this country, in, in the States, and I had a mission. I felt mm. I had a mission. And, or I had a purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to come to this country to gain education, to better myself for service. Yes. Service to mankind. Yes. And service to God. Of okay. course, it was not very clear what the exactly how, uh, exactly how but things will unfold. Exactly. But very deep in my my soul, mm -hmm. I knew I, I felt I needed to serve God and the people. Yeah. And these people. That mm -hmm. that is what I felt uh, I needed to prepare myself for. So I came over, and uh, as much as possible, I made sure I I I kept focused. Yes. I knew my mission. I knew I knew the destination. I knew yes. why I am here. Yeah. And I kept on. I kept on. Uh, you know, right. checking. Am mm -hmm. I on the target? Am I on the path? Yeah. So but I it sounds like every step of the way, he yes. as you were checking in, he's saying, "Yep, I got you." Yes. And, I got uh, you. Whenever challenge come um you know they will come challenge challenge yeah. will come from more directions but yeah. again i think when you, you remain focused on the core yes the new and the calling <gasps> and the call to do a certain mission mm -hmm. and it will fill a certain purpose that kept me going remain that, focus on the call yes i Love that. Yes. It's probably going to be the title of this podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Humphrey. Yes, yes. Um, so, you are in seminary school. How long were you in seminary school for? I was there for uh, close to five years. Okay, so close course. to five years. Yes. You're there, you are... And then what's happening back with your family, right? With because your family, family is still I in Kenya at the time. Yes. I informed my family that I, I got to school mm -hmm. and we kept in touch okay. on phone. Okay. Um, and those days in Kenya, the phones were not... Uh, right, very th common. They were not very common. Yes. My children and wife used to travel for like um, three miles <gasps> or four miles Just to go to answer the phone. phone. To answer the phone, uh, we had certain... Yeah. There were certain times that I would right. call. Right. So whenever I needed to call, I would send a word so that... It's, she is told yes. together with the children and that, uh, that I would be talking to them. So they would go for those uh, miles yes. and wait for my and call wait. at certain wow. time. So it was, that's how we kept in touch and also writing letters. And you know, a letter would take like a month. What? <laughs> wow. Or a couple of weeks. Yes, to get there, to, right? To, oh to, my goodness. To, like, who writes together. letters anymore? And yes. But anyway, <laughs> everything is email now. Yes, um, yes, we are. Okay, so you go through five years of seminary school. Yes. And then what? Because you said your purpose is to serve. Yes. Your purpose is to impact. Your yes. purpose is to use this fire that started at a very yes. young age yes. when you were a teenager and spread it. This How is, are you going to do that? Yeah. Uh, what was in my mind uh, as I was beginning this was to come over here go to seminary, mm -hmm. uh, get enough uh, education, mm -hmm. uh, learning, so that I can get back, I can go back to Kenya to train other ministers, mm -hmm. um, and uh, especially to do ministry among the, 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 the poor. The poor. And the, the, the orphans. The orphans. And the abandoned. Okay. So I felt my mission will Will be, will around be the poor, the uh, the abandoned, and the um and and the destitute, orphans. yes, yeah. the mm -hmm. destitute. Got but uh, in two thousand and two, one afternoon, I felt a very strong uh, 
aunt, after so searching and prayer, I felt I felt a call mm -hmm. to focus, a very call to focus on um, empowering or rescuing the orphaned and the poor and the disenfranchised in the society, the hungry, mm -hmm. uh, those imprisoned by situations of this life, yes. those 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 who's who's being in the world is like they are strangers. Yes. I mean, especially the children. Yes. Uh, I felt I felt a it's call a to to deliberately uh, get myself on the line. Okay. And uh, help them because that was me. Yes. When I was that was you. That, that was, was you. Me when I was yes. growing up. So I felt uh, with the time I have have gained some uh, have some experience. Some resources. They don't, they may, yeah. Some yeah. resources. They may not. They may not have to go through what I went oh, I went through. So right. I felt I needed to dedicate my life for that. To as them. I preach, as I train church uh -huh. ministers, as I do whatever else thing I do, I felt that will be the that will be the main thing now. So and that has now turned out to be the purpose. My purpose. Yes. My purpose in this life. What I what I felt that um, um, that afternoon mm -hmm. is that um, my main purpose in this life is f to take care of those children who are like me when I was growing up. Those who yeah. are going th through the challenges that I went through. Yes. Those who have no shoes. I put on my first shoe when I was in grade uh, when I was in grade seven. That's the <gasps> first. When you had grade... your first pair of shoes in yes. the seventh grade. Yes. Yes. In the seventh grade. So wow. I had the problems and problems or uh, the problem of tuition and clothing and yes. stuff like that and food. Right. So I felt. Um, I think this is the vineyard. Yes. This is the this is the this is where my work is. This is, this is where my work is. Yep, this is what so and um, I felt pulled. Mm -hmm. I felt energized to do that. Mm -hmm. And right now I've been doing that for the last over twenty years. Twenty years. Yes. Yes. You have been going back to Kenya. Yes. Oh, so now tell us about what this church this church that first of all put you through seminary schools five years you come back mm. you have your purpose now you're like yes. you guys this is it yes. this is what i'm supposed to be doing yes and still this church continues to surround you to yes. support you to elevate you and to believe in your vision yes, yes. and so what have you been able to do uh, for those kids that you just mentioned, the orphan, the poor, the ones that are homeless, yes. um, what have you, with the church, have been able to do for them? What we've been able to do is, in 2006, I returned home. Mm -hmm. uh, so you went back in 2006? I, I went back home in 2006. Okay. This country, the U.S., was very good. Mm -hmm. And it's a place that is very inviting. Man, you can't go <laughs> here and you don't like going yeah, back. You don't like going back to your place exactly. because you know the problems. Yeah. But I knew I was. I have a mission. Yes. I thought I had a purpose. Right. And my purpose was not was not to be act, was not to be acted here. It was not to be accomplished here. here. It was yes. back home. Right. And I remember, and I told God that I would want to when I through with the um, education if you bless me i'll go I'm back home where you and tell me this is the vineyard where exactly. i'm going to tell i'll yes. tell in that vineyard yes so i returned home and um, my friends now who had sent me to seminary the church uh they came over for a mission trip mm -hmm. and uh, we kept on dreaming together we, all of us we, we, we kind of all of us got excited about doing this and uh, let me say so far um we uh, we have been able to or in kenya we have been able to establish four homes we have four children's four homes, homes. Four with children 50 homes. children with 50 children uh, we have uh, um, we have other over 300 and uh, 200 and uh, 50 kids. 250 50 kids. kids. Who we take who we take care of or who uh, we have found the people to we support people. them. Yeah. To support them through their sc schooling, uh -huh. providing them with the clothing, mm -hmm. providing with school levies mm -hmm. and tuition and medical care, mm -hmm. walking the journey of life with oh. them. So that is that's that's now uh, is my purpose. Yes. And uh, and opportunity to exit. To, or to leave it, yeah. but um, I felt no, like, no, no, I no, found no. it. No, I no, found no, no. It. I Once found you find that purpose, don't let I go. I found a purpose. Not, yes. you can't. And the th the good thing when you found your when you find your purpose, 
it brings in a lot of joy and fulfillment. Absolutely. The money is not a factor. It's not. It's, it's, it's not a factor. But it's the factor not. is that which you feel, you know, you can't wait for the day to break. Like yes. my day starts at five yeah. because I can't wait right. for the sun to come out so that I can do this. Yes. To help do, those, yeah. to empower those, uh, 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 those those children to serve to serve right? yes. so and uh, i'm so we are we are happy that through those 20 years we can account wow. we have seen we have seen kids uh, get helped we have seen children come out of poverty uh -huh. we have children who have become um who in college who are in college yes we have others who are high school teachers uh, you know middle school teachers uh, others who are, who are in nursing, others who are engineers, wow. others who are, who are, they are all over, technicians, electricians, Martians. And, and Humphrey, these are all your children. Yes, those, those are my these children. These are your children. Yes, they, okay. call, me, they call me dad. Oh. The biggest title I have, yes. you know, the most prestigious title yes. I have. It's not of a dad. Yes. It's not of a dad. And I adapted it. Sometimes I would ask myself, Lord, did, you, did I go to Oskin Seminary so that I can become a dad? Become a dad. A dad. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's uh, what I to do. Yeah, but I feel, I feel it's a great honor to do this because it comes with a lot of fulfillment. Yes. And joy. We think about how many kids could have grown up the same way you did, but now at least 250 of them, yes. you know, can say that now they have a better life. Yes. They're, they're, they're educated. Yes. They know God, you know, they know the gospel. Yes. They, I mean, they, you're their father. Yes. You're their dad. Yes. This is, this is what you have created. This is a pack. And the thing is, this is not just impacting one person. No. This is impacting families, yes. right? Because not only are you impacting that child, but you're impacting their parents, mm. you're impacting their home, you're impacting future generations that yes. are going to now have a better life because of that child had the opportunity to have clothes, yes. to have food, mm. to have an education. So you have created generations um, through your work by serving, by answering the call, yes. right? Yeah. By trusting that I have $5 in my pocket and I'm in New York mm -hmm. and I need to get to Tennessee. Yes. And then I end up at the big chicken. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just yes. like, yes. what? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, that's true because with the purpose is, uh, I think it's about touching people's lives. Absolutely. One of the things that uh, that I, I feel is so important my as far as I'm concerned is to touch somebody's life. Absolutely. There is fame and money, and th they are good things. They're good. Education and all stuff is mm -hmm. good. But uh, I think out of it all, uh, touching somebody's life is one of the greatest thing one can do. Absolutely. And uh, let me say, I'm humbled because I've had tons of opportunity to do, to do that. Uh -huh. And I feel that is why why am I alive? Yes. I felt the reason why God created me. I went to school. I went to seminary. I, mm -hmm. went to, I did all that I did. But you were obedient. It was such a time. Exactly. Yes. It's to do okay. this. Yes. It's to so do this. I have two things, right? So yes. one is Humphrey wrote a book on his journey, yes. right? And yes. it, it is called The Journey Against All Odds. And I need insiders to wrap their head around this little boy who grew up in Kenya who was hit by this light, this fire inside of him to know God more, mm. to offer more, to serve, to be obedient, to trust, right? Ends up in America, um, ends up at the big chicken out of all places with no money in his pocket. Mm -hmm. And now he is able to go back and minister and create generations of well-being for hundreds of kids. Yes. Um, I mean, this is this is what this podcast is all about, Humphrey. Mm. When I heard your story, I was like, wait, what? Hold on. Okay. So I talk about purpose. This is absolutely <laughs> the best definition of purpose. I, I couldn't have created it myself, but Humphrey has a book that he wrote about his journey 
and it is called The Journey Against All Odds. Humphrey, where can we find this book if our listeners want to listen to it? And I will definitely include a link yes. um, in the in the show notes so you'll listeners will be able to access the link to get their hands on the book in the show notes. But if they want to purchase it somewhere else, where can they find it? I think that the, those uh, two books mm -hmm. you can easily uh, find them in um, um, in Amazon. Amazon, okay, Amazon. perfect. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I have uh, if if for example, give them mm -hmm. if you give my 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 our website yes our website uh -huh. and my email yes. address yes if somebody needs a book yeah or even the even the the, the, the phone number I can yes. give the phone number okay. for for US and yes. for. Uh, well, while I'm in Kenya, okay. as th that book will be delivered to you. Wow. Okay. That, that book will be So insiders, please, 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 you need to get your hands on this book um, to read about Humphrey's journey. And there's so much more in the book, right? But we only yes, yes, an hour. Yes, actually, that, that book is a summary of all the oh, is part of my the purpose. Journey. So yes. far, the 20 years. I've captured the 20 years of fulfilling the purpose yes. uh, of what I felt God has called me to do. Right. Um, I've captured it there, including mm -hmm. my life's journey yes. and how I discovered my right. my purpose. Mm -hmm. And um, th I've I've also mentioned, I've also serialized the the success of the results yes. when you leave God's purpose, it how it impacts people positively. Right. I think I have captured it. Uh, I've captured perfect. it. Uh, I've captured it. Yes. Uh, in perfect. There. Perfect. Perfect. And then you bought another. He comes bearing gift, you guys. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to. Um, bring Humphrey back on the pod because he just comes with gifts. Um, <laughs> and then you have another book. It's kind of like a pocket size book and it's called rebranding to win personal empowerment for successful leadership. So tell us a little bit yes. about this book. Uh, that's a book, which is, uh, um, that's a book to, to link fence uh -huh. or to protect your purpose. Oh. Because when I discovered my purpose, it was so dear to me. Then wow. I kept on, asking myself and so searching myself how can i protect this purpose wow. because you are living in a world which has so many distractors oh my goodness you are living in a world that has so many uh distractors yes. and it is possible to get it distracted and Absolutely. lose focus Absolutely. so that book that book i've uh, i've trying to, to 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 provide uh how you can bullet proof Wow. Because the purpose is so strong yes. that it's something that you can die for. Remember yes. one of the great people, Martin Luther King, said, yes. you started to live. Mm -hmm. When you find something you can live for and die for. Yes. So purpose is that strong yes. that you, you live for it yes. and you can pay a big price. Yeah, absolutely. You can pay a big, uh, yes. a big price for it. So I felt now that God, uh, I was fortunate mm -hmm. that I found it. Yes. I'm now to... The experience I've gained for the 20 years, how can we link fence it? How wow. can we protect that purpose? How can we draw that purpose? Yes. How can we live within that purpose? That book provides hints in the leadership how you can manage and, wow. uh, and how you can propel that purpose to the finish as such that you succeed. Man, I can't even, I'm a loss for words because. Oh, wow. Um, I'm not lost for words because it's so true. We get on this journey to purpose and we can feel like, well, maybe I really need to go right. Or maybe I really need to go left. Or, you know, you're on this journey and you're trying to tell yourself to persevere and there's yes. challenges and you're just like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to have a resource that helps you yes. protect that yes. purpose, right? Yeah. Because we can we can lose focus. We it's can easy. absolutely yeah, it's, it's so easy. easy to do that. And trust me, I, I, I see something shiny and I'm like, ooh, yeah, <laughs> that, that is me. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. to have something tangible that can help you protect that purpose is absolutely it's priceless. It really is. So yeah. wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. So insiders, we'll include the links and the information to get these books in the show notes to make sure that you all can get your hands on it, okay? Yes. Well, this is absolutely amazing. Humphrey, I, um, like I said before, 
This platform is about podcasts. This yes. platform allows individuals just like you to come and share their stories and experience. Mm. Um, on this journey of purpose, oftentimes, you know, some insiders are like, Harley, I don't know if I can do this anymore. It's mm. so hard. Mm. It is hard. But yes. think about Humphrey. Think about a person that just said, I'm just going to trust God mm. and what he has planned for me. I'm just on this journey and I'm going to be obedient. Mm. Um, and I mean, think about that, the challenges, the environment that Humphrey had to grow up in. And now he is in a position to go back and help kids, orphans, poor, homeless children that are living out in the street. And now he's able to build this generation of impact. Right. Yeah. And so when you are giving your purpose, hold on tight to it. Mm. Um, do everything you can to protect it. Get Humphrey's book to help mm. you. But do everything you can to protect that purpose because that person purpose is so much bigger than you. Yes. And it's not about you. It's about serving about others. It's about everybody else but you. That's yes. what the purpose yes. is. That's true. It is. It is. And so do everything you can to hold on to it, to protect it. Because um, it is something that was given to you and you only. Yeah. Even if you think somebody else is doing the same thing, they're not. Yeah. They're yeah. Not. Because you cannot be a, I believe, as somebody said, you cannot be a protocol. I cannot be a photocopy of anyone. No. Nobody, I'm no. The only Nobody answer. is. Exactly. They may say, I look, my brothers look like me. But they're not they, you. But they're not me. They're, they're not, not me. They're the not purpose you. is, as you've slightly said, is where you have. There is a unique offer. Yes. That you are the only one who can offer. Only one. Only in this, one. In this life. Exactly. There is a legacy that it is only and you who can yeah. live in, in this you, life. Exactly. And um, when you get to that point, mm -hmm. you, feel, you start to live. You start to live. Well, I'm definitely all fired up, okay? And um, I just want to say thank you, Humphrey, for coming on the podcast and sharing your story. You have inspired me today. Thank you. Thank um, you. I, you know, I typically uh, put out episodes in hopes that I will inspire others to walk and discover their purpose. But today you have, you know, just inspired and motivated me to continue to walk on this journey of purpose. Um, because it can be challenging sometimes. Yes, right? yes, it can be. It can be. Uh, Challenges are there. But I am I'm so thankful You're that so you were able to come and share your stories with us. Insiders, if you have been moved by Humphrey's story, um, please make sure to check out the show notes so you know where to get his your hands on his books. And also, we are going to get some information. If you want to reach out to Humphrey um, yourself and maybe have a discussion with him or talk mm -hmm. to him, We'll, we'll give out some information and how to, to reach out to him or his people. Mm -hmm. And um, we are also on social media, so in, Instagram and Facebook, Inside the Bubble HG. So that way you can make sure to stay in contact with us and you can see some snippets of mm -hmm. the podcast episode. And um, you know what I always say through every story, through every experience, there's purpose in your story. <laughs>